Hello viewers, Super GT here once again. Now this is iRacing. Yes, we are back in the Mazda MX-5s. And this is Laguna Seca, this week's track. Last week we did some Lime Rock. Now it's the turn of Laguna Seca. Qualifying mid-grid, going down into, uh, down to the first turn. And minding my own business on the outside, but then I'm going to get spun around. And there we go race over pretty much because as I try to drive away here you see my steering wheel is completely all over the place I'm turning left but going straight and then turning to the right and we can see in just a moment here on the replay I go in deep I'm the red car with the black stripes and I get spun around and then smashed into by the blue car you see my left rear is completely battered it's not facing the right way we go then to the second race of the video, pole position. Um, I, I get the odd pole position actually, so a lot of the time I'm mid grid, but then every now and then I somehow pull out pull out a pole position, and this is one of those times into the first turn, maybe a little bit early on the brakes. The guy in the green car behind me almost caught out, but now I can make a dash for it and try to get away. So through into turn number three. Uh, hooking up with the apex nicely in the middle using all the curbs on the in, uh, entry and the outside as well as you see they're just going over the red part getting um, an X at the top of the screen don't want to do that too many times and then into this one going down into third gear you can carry a lot of speed through turn five opens up quite a lot in this car it's not the fastest car obviously in the game or the simulation so you can carry damn lot of speed through there it's quite an open corner at turn five turn six a very tricky one to get right uh, very hard to know exactly where to turn in because you can't actually see the apex when you're turning in then into the corkscrew breaking on the curb on the right hand side and then hooked up nicely in second gear and you're kind of almost guessing where that apex is of the right hander um, if you're good at the game then you're probably not guessing you probably have a better reference than what I do but then coming up into turn number 10, a, f a fast sweeping right hander, taking in fourth gear, move over to the right hand side, looking for the two, there it is, then down two gears into second, hooking up with the apex nicely, the tyres feeling fresh on the opening lap. In the end, it was quite an easy win. I think the guy in second made quite a lot of mistakes, he was blocking, and then I ended up winning by over 10 seconds. So mixed results, and that is the story of my iRacing career really, there are the results, 11 seconds I won by. So looking for better consistency really. So I joined this race, the Production Cup, so we have two classes in this race. I'm in the Master MX-5 still, qualified 5th, moving up to 4th immediately off the line, as the guy in 4th didn't, uh, didn't want to move at all. So we have the Pontiac Solstice as well in this race. So a multi-class race. So at one point here, or at multiple points, we will come round to traffic. The, the, the Solstice is the slower car, maybe three or four seconds a lap slower around this track, which is Summit Point. And I do like this track. It's, it's a tricky one. It's a small track, kind of uh, like Lime Rock, that kind of size, that length. It's a technical one as well. That section I've just gone through, very tricky to get right. And I actually really like this track. It's, it's the first one I did in iRacing in this car. It's the first one I did against other people anyway. I did practice in some other tracks. But this is the first uh, track that I actually raced online. So I do have a certain affinity towards it. And that is going to be the end of lap number one. Second and third there going for a battle. This guy behind me going for a massive lunge. Lunge of the century, but he doesn't come off. He's going to go wide. And I'm going to reclaim fourth position, getting 1x on the exit of the corner. So then we move to lap number four. First and second have got a gap. As you can see, the blue and the yellow car just around the corner. But then I have caught up to third place. So what we're going to try and do here, just stick as close as we can. It's quite a hard place to overtake around, especially around this section. So we're just going to try to keep in his mirrors, make sure he's uh, thinking about my presence and maybe we can uh, make him 
uh, commit an error basically. Uh, that is the main tactic here, although off of the second to last turn, not getting the best of exits. He's got um, about a second on me there. He is going to go wide, and that is going to give me the run now through into turn number one. He's going to go defensive very early. I'm not going to bother following him on that side of the road, so I'm going to go to the left. He's still on my right-hand side there. It's quite hard to see him, but we do have the spotter telling me when it's clear. And it is clear we're just going to let him slot in ahead. Probably not the best place to try to go around the outside. But still, um, on the back foot, he certainly is, as I am certainly on his tail right now. He will definitely be able to see me in his mirrors. I've noticed that the mirrors are actually... Well, they're hard to get used to because... It's hard, it can be quite hard to judge exactly how uh, how close behind someone is, but when they are very close, you can definitely tell, and you do definitely feel the pressure if someone is constantly hounding you from, uh, let's say, within 0.5 seconds. You can definitely tell when they're within that range of possibly going for an overtake. But the best thing to do in iRacing, racing, I think, is just to stick to your own guns, stick to your breaking points, stick to your turning in points. Almost forget that the guy behind you is there and just hope that if you can do the right thing then they will actually struggle to get past you now we're going to get another run on him here he's going to go defensive I don't think he really had to because I, I wasn't quite going to go for a lunge not from that far back I prefer to pass if I'm actually alongside going into the braking zone rather than go for a lunge where I'm not but we have got a very good exit here I'm going to move to the right hand side as we go into the fast right hander and then quite sensibly I think he's just going to back out there and indeed he does so I'm going to go up into third first and second it turned out had very high I ratings and uh, safety ratings so I wasn't really expected to beat them but the best we can do is just try to uh, come in third I think which is still a good result now, through this section that section honestly is very very tricky to get right I struggled through there I've, well, I've always struggled through that. It's, 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 a, it's a hard one. Let's say that. Into the final turn. This is a nice turn. When you get it right, it really does feel good. You can take quite a lot of curve on the exit. There's a bit of extra tarmac. And not getting a 1x there despite going quite wide. So, I'm going to move to beyond halfway into the race. The yellow car is in second place in the MX-5s. That is a solstice. We're going to go past there. You can see just uh, how slow it is. Although he was lifting off to let me pass so nice job from that driver so the guy ahead I believe he has damage from one of the back markers so this gives us a chance maybe of getting second place and if you can beat someone who has a better I rating than you then you are going to um, improve your I rating by quite a lot more basically the I rating it's, it's just a rating of how good the game thinks you are or how good the sim sorry thinks you are and therefore, if you beat someone with a better eye rating than you, then the game basically got it wrong and it will adjust it accordingly. So you'll get a much better eye rating if you beat someone with a far higher one than you uh, than you have. In which case, this guy did. Obviously, he has damage, but it's still that's part of that's part of racing. If you have damage, then you have to deal with the consequences of that. So uh, perhaps he got unlucky with some contact somewhere. But into the final turn, we're going to get very close to him. And then through the final turn on the apex again he's actually taking that quite nicely so i think he still has the cornering speed maybe it's just a straight line speed where he's a little bit down but they're coming down this straight he seems to be very even on the brakes is he going to have any trouble not quite maybe it's just low gear acceleration as you can see they're just pulling onto the back of him as we go through second and third gear on the exit of turn one almost getting a bit of a slide there as we come up into the fast right hander I think this can just about be taken flat out if you get it just about right and then on the brakes I noticed I'm totally forgetting to blip the throttle when uh, downshifting so that I obviously need to get back in that habit I think it's because I I interchange iRacing with Forza where I don't do it obviously you can uh, downshift um, you can blip on the downshift on Forza as well but I don't do it on Forza and I kind of just get in the groove of Forza and forget to do it on iRacing. So I do need to switch my iRacing head on when I get back into this game. Or, sorry, back into the sim. I keep calling it a game, but it's not a game. So, sticking with this guy in second, but not really able to push for the move to get into that second place. 
This is the last lap. You see there that he's got maybe a second or so on me. And we're going to catch up to another Solstice. This could present an opportunity, but it's not going to on this occasion because the Solstice very wisely gets out of the way. He can see that we are fairly close together and in the end I finished third. So not too bad of a result. That Solstice did a very good job there. Understanding that he's not in a battle so he might as well just get out of the way. Very clever driving. We moved then to the final race of the video. Back to Laguna Seca and qualifying mid-grid up the inside into fourth place. I go for a very late braking uh, point there. And actually, the, the other guy complied with that a lot. I, I was asking a lot of the other guy there, I think. Uh, luckily, he was he was up to it, and he, uh, he saw what was going on. My brake pedal, I must say, is pretty awful. The Thrustmaster TX a wheel is very good. I have the shifter as well, the TH8A shifter. But it's the pedals that I have the problem with, uh, with very little sensitivity in my left foot. I can barely feel when I'm on the brakes. This guy is going to spin around. So at some point I do hope to get some better pedals. Most likely the T3PA pedals, again from Thrustmaster, which has a mod where you can actually change the sensitivity. And hopefully that will improve my performance because on the brakes, I think that is my ultimate weakness on iRacing at the moment, where I just have no consistency on the brakes. So I feel as though I can't get too close to, uh, to people Otherwise, I will just uh, completely batter them from behind if that doesn't sound too rude. Coming downhill then at Laguna Seca, the track flows very nicely at the end here with very open, fast flowing corners. We are in third place, and that is a good gain on lap number one of 10 that we have in this race through the final turn following the pink car. Now we move to uh, lap number three. Now the guy in second there just going to have a bit of a moment on the exit of uh, turn number three. And then through four, I'm going to carry a lot more speed. He's going to move to the left-hand side. I'm going to go to the right-hand side, which is the outside for the left of five, the uphill corner here. And he is still there on my inside. Just going to give him the room, keep to the right, keep to the right. And I'd rather not go through turn six side by side, so we're just going to let him slot ahead there. And cleverly, it turns out, because on the exit he's not going to get a very good run. And then I have the inside line now as we go uphill towards the corkscrew. He is on my uh, right hand side still. And then he does uh, back out quite early. So we're going to go through into second place. First place there, gaining maybe two, three seconds whilst we were battling. We're going to move ahead uh, a couple of laps. And we saw there the slow car warning. So clearly, the first place guy has had some sort of moment through the corkscrew and uh, not good for him as we then come through the second to last turn. This puts the pressure back on because once you're maybe four or five seconds ahead it's comfortable but now I am right on him as we come through the exit of four into five and then I've got the inside line here so I should really get this actually yes he's, he's backed out quite early I've braked a little bit early he's almost gone into the back of me but now just need to keep calm and make sure I don't do anything too stupid. He is right on my tail, but I mustn't think about that too much. Hitting the apex quite nicely there, just running two wheels on the exit. Fortunately, not getting a 1x. And then we move ahead to lap number eight. This time again, going a little bit too wide and getting a poor run up the hill. Coming into the corkscrew, he's just gonna get ahead and I'm just, oh God, just gonna tap him round. Just the slightest misjudgment. And then at the final lap, when I was just coming through to win the race, he, he'd obviously waited for me. Um, he was clearly unhappy. Fair enough. I mean, I did I did take him out. It was my fault. I will 100% admit that. And then coming through the second to last turn, he's going to go for a, a complete uh, takeout attempt. And he just about misses. It was so close. But we're going to have another look at this. Look at this for the second to last corner. He's going to completely cut the... The gravel and then go flying into the barrier. Very, very unlucky for him in his attempt to completely kill me. But fortunately, Super GT lives to fight another day. There we go. Completely killed himself. If he had been maybe a half a second earlier, he would have killed me instead. But there we go. It was a race win. Maybe um, an ill-deserved one, as I did completely wipe out the leader. But 
that's the way it goes sometimes I guess and that brings a close to this video I do hope you enjoyed it guys iRacing is back here to stay on the channel and I hope you have enjoyed the coverage of it there will be plenty more to come so that is all from me today guys do subscribe if you are new and would like to see more and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and i shall see you in the next one thank you very much for watching goodbye